welcome to academy of civil services another episode on indian polity today's class is about the preamble of indian constitution the preamble about the preamble of indian constitution we have mentioned earlier that the preamble of the indian constitution the original version of preamble of indian constitution was objectives resolution an objectives resolution was presented by prime by jawaharlal nehru in the constituent assembly in the very first session of indian constituent assembly which started on 9th december the first session of indian constituent assembly started on 9th december 1946 in the very first session not in the first day after few days on 13th december 13th december 1946 Jawaharlal Nehru presented the objectives resolution the Nehru presented objectives resolution objectives resolution of Indian constitution it was the basic philosophy of Indian constitution and the fundamental philosophy what should be the basic philosophy democracy india would be a democratic country sovereign country india would be a republic etc then what should be the values held by the people of india justice equality liberty fraternity and all these values will prevail in india then this was the fundamental note on the philosophy of indian constitution presented by jawaharlal nehru in the constituent assembly and we have discussed the this objectives resolution presented by jawaharlal nehru in the constituent assembly was later modified into the preamble of indian constitution and incorporated into the constitution of india then the preamble original version is objectives resolution presented by nehru on 13th december in the very first session of indian constituent assembly as it was formed in 1946 as per the guidelines of cabinet mission plan that hopefully you remember we have discussed in the class then this is about the beginning what is the original version of preamble of indian constitution the first constitution in the world to start with a preamble preamble means simply that is the introduction when you are reading a book there would be introduction for the book an introduction of the book gives a highlight of the content of the book then like that this is the introduction of preamp the pre uh, introduction of indian constitution that is the preamble then normally many constitutions does do not have preamble some constitutions have preamble then the first constitution in the world to start with a preamble was american constitution or the us constitution then that means Indian constitution has borrowed the idea of having a preamble or starting with a preamble from the US constitution then the idea of preamble in the last class we have discussed about the borrowings from different countries constitutions from the US constitution we have mentioned that the federal system of india is borrowed and the system of independence of judiciary and judicial review are borrowed from the us constitution in the same manner the american constitution was the first constitution in the world to start with a preamble then the idea of starting the constitution of india with a preamble was borrowed from the american constitution and preamble is known as identity card of indian constitution and everybody would have a identity card then identity card of the constitution because the identity card of an individual gives the information about the individual this is the complete information identity of the individual whether the person is a male or female and whether the person is a indian national or a foreign and na foreign national that can be verified from the identity card and what is the nature of the person and which state he belongs then everything which is which is supposed to be known about a single person can be known from the the information on these features can be avail made available from the identity card of the person in the same manner what is the idea of indian constitution 
what is the address of Indian constitution, what is the nature of Indian constitution and what type of constitution Indian constitution is, whether it is a democratic constitution, whether it is a republic constitution, republican constitution, whether India is a sovereign country, everything is in a summary mentioned in the preamble of Indian constitution that is why preamble is the identity card of Indian constitution. Now we are moving to the text of Indian preamble. Preamble of Indian constitution starts with we the people of India. Then the text of preamble starts with we that is the people of India. Then the most important part of the preamble, one of the most important aspect of the preamble is that the constitution of India because preamble is a part of Indian constitution that is the beginning of the constitution. In the very first beginning of the constitution the emphasis has been given to the people of India. Then we the people of India then preamble starts the text like this we the people of India then the people of India takes a decision that is we having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign secular socialist democratic republic or sovereign sec socialist secular democratic republic then the first point of the constitution of the preamble of India in India the source of authority is the people of India because the preamble starts with the people of India it mentions that people of India are the highest source of authority in the country then in India the source of authority because India is a democratic country and we are accepting adopting we have adopted a democratic constitution for country then for highlighting the value of democracy or highlighting the power of the people in Indian system and the constitution started with the we the people of India then if the question comes according to the preamble of Indian constitution who among the following is the highest source of authority in the country it is not the constitution it is the people of India then people of India are the highest source of authority and preamble has a mentioned that that is the highest source of authority in India are the people of India then people of India are the highest source of authority then source of authority as per the preamble is the people of India that is the first point we are getting from the from the preamble from the beginning of the preamble of Indian constitution is that the source of authority in India is the people of India that is why the constitution or the preamble starts with the title with the sentence we the people of India now the people of India is taking a decision and the very first point of the preamble is that source of authority in India is the people of India question may they may give the options which among the following is the source of authority in the India as per the preamble of Indian constitution they may give option a people of India option B the Prime Minister of India option C government of India option D constitution of India don't get confused the answer is the people of India are the source of authority in India as per the preamble of Indian constitution then it moves ahead explaining the nature of India then we the people of India having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a then it defines the nature of the Indian states then second part of Indian preamble of Indian constitution you can see the text of the preamble under this video in the slideshow or you can keep a copy hard copy of the material in front of you when you are watching see to the material and see either way see to the slideshow and so see the text of preamble we the people of India having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign socialist secular democratic republic then it next the next part of the preamble of Indian constitution is that it mentions or it expresses the nature of Indian state what type of state we are going to establish by the constitution of India then second part of the preamble is what is the nature of the state we heard because 
the people of India having solemnly resolved to constitute India, that is by this constitution, by this preamble, we are constituting an India or we are forming an India which is the first nature of the state, Indian state is, which is sovereign. Then the uh, one nature of the state explained by the preamble of Indian constitution is sovereign and second one is socialist then India is a sovereign country, India is a socialist country and third one is secular, India is a secular country and the fourth one is democratic, that means India is a democracy and the fifth one is, fifth one is so sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic. Then five natures of Indian state, the five, five fundamental nature of the state of India which is going to be constituted after the independence of India from the British colonialism by the new constitution of India are these. One is India is a sovereign country, socialist country, secular country, democratic country and India is a republic. That is why in the passport of the citizens it would be written Republic of India. Then we can see what is the meaning of sovereignty, socialism, secularism, democracy and republic. These are the five natures. India is a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. These are the five natures of Indian constitution as per the preamble of Indian constitution. Now let us see what is the meaning of sovereignty. Sovereignty means that because there is nothing above the country. Country is above all. Or the idea of India. India is above the all. And in another way, in the technical definition, sovereignty means that Parliament of India is the authority to add a new territory into India or to cede a territory of India to any other country. If a new territory has to be added to India, then the application has to go in front of the Parliament of India. Then Parliament is the highest authority. Parliament is the house of the people. From the people's representatives are sitting there. Then Parliament of India is the authority to add a territory or to cede a territory. The meaning of sovereignty means that Parliament of India. Then Parliament is the authority, has the power either to add a new territory into India or to cede a territory. Add a territory means that if a new territory has to be added to India, then parliament has the power to do that. We can see any new territory has been added to India after independence by the parliament of India. It is the because Sikkim. When we got independence, the example of adding a territory into India is one is Sikkim. When we got the independence, Sikkim was not a part of India. Sikkim was ruled by a regional dynasty named as Chogyal. Then later, Sikkim, the people of Sikkim demanded that we want to join with India. Then India added Sikkim later. In 1960s, Sikkim was added as a part of India. Then this decision was taken by the parliament of India. Then parliament, it is the meaning of sovereignty. Parliament has the power to add a new territory into India and Sikkim and another example is Goa and Daman and Diu. Goa, Daman and Diu. When we got independence on 15th August 1947, Goa, Daman and Diu were under the Portuguese Empire. It was not under the British. On the Indian territories which were under the British colonialism got the independence on never on August 15, 1947. But Goa, Daman and Diu were under the Portuguese authorities. And Goa, Daman and Diu got the independence in 1961 through a military operation of Indian military in Goa, Daman and Diu over the Portuguese establishments named as Operation Vijay 1961. Then through Operation Vijay 1961, Goa, Daman and Diu got the independence and they were subsequently added to the Indian territory or Indians in, to the territory of India. Then adding a territory example is Sikkim, Goa, Daman and Diu and Dadra and Nagar Haveli, Pondicherry, Pondicherry was under or the present day Puducherry. Puducherry when we got the independence 
Puducherry was under the port under the French authorities. It was not under the English. Then Puducherry also did not get freedom. Eventually, Puducherry get the freedom in 1960s when the French Parliament officially decided to withdraw from Puducherry and hand over the territory to Indian government. Then Puducherry was also given later added to Indian territory by the parliamentary decision. Then Parliament is the highest decision making body in the country which has the authority to add a territory into India. Then for adding a territory, we have given some examples. And second power of the parliament is that to cede a territory of India, that is giving the territory of India into a foreign country. Then parliament, only parliament is the authority which has the power to cede a territory of India. Whether we have ceded some territory of India to a foreign country so far we have done and there was a region in the India Pakistan border in the West Bengal that time Bangladesh was also a part of Pakistan the present day India Bangladesh border or that times India up to the liberation war of Bangladesh Bangladesh was a part of Pakistan then in 1950s after the partition of India there was an area named as Baruberi then this Baruberi region, Baruberi, because the Radcliffe line, then Radcliffe line is the line between India and Pakistan, and Radcliffe was the person who drafted the plan. And Radcliffe mentioned in, in mentioned which Tana or the which police station will be in India or which police station would be in Pakistan. But he did not mention in the Radcliffe plan, there was no mention about the Baruberi Thana or Baruberi police station, the areas coming under the under the under the con control of Baruberi police station was neither mentioned in Indian plan nor in the Pakistani plan. Then there was a dispute after independence. Then half of this Baruberi, which was close to Pakistan or the present day Bangladesh, was given to Pakistan, was ceded to Pakistan. Another part of Baruberi, which was close to India, was taken, which was in the border of India, was taken by India, retained by India. Anyway, the ceding the territory of Baruberi to Pakistan is an example of parliament taking a decision or the parliament of India has the power to take a decision regarding ceding a territory of India for any foreign country. Then another example is there is an, there was, there is an uninhibited island named as Kachatyuvu. And this Kachatyuvu island, it was disputed till 1960s between India and Sri Lanka. In the Indian Ocean, this island was climbed by Sri Lanka and it was kept by India under the control of India. Then we later decided in 19 in 1960s and we decided to hand over Kachatiwu Island or to cede the Kachatiwu Island to Sri Lanka. This is also another example of Parliament of India ceding a territory of India for any foreign national. Then officially. Uh, sovereignty means that Parliament of India is the highest decision making authority in the country and it only Parliament has the power to add either to add a territory into India or to cede a territory from India to a foreign country. That is the meaning of sovereignty. Then India is a sovereign country. Second one is India is a socialist country. What is the meaning of socialism? Socialism broadly we can take it as the welfare of the poor or in another sense economic equality can be also known as the socialism. Another meaning of socialism is that ownership of means of production by the state. Then socialism, Indian socialism is different and the socialism in its ideal type is different. Socialism in its ideal type wants to destroy the complete economic inequality. Then everybody working according to their ability and getting according to their needs. That is the that is the ideal type of socialism. That is imagine I am a doctor and I am treating the patients. I am doing my innovation. I am doing surgery. I am doing the science, scientific research and finding out or discovering new medicines for different diseases. That is whatever I can do. Being a doctor, I am able to do. Another person is a simple rickshaw puller. And whatever he can do that he can pull the rickshaw and he can transport the people from one location to another location but that is meaning 
I am working according to my ability and he is also working according to my ability. Now, what salary I will get? What amount of money I will get? That is according to my need. Imagine that I have a small family of five members. I have two kids, father, mother and me and wife. Hmm? Then for five family members I have, then I would be given 25,000, for example, 25,000 rupees every month because my expenditure is only that much. My need is that much. I need that much money for survival. Then the rickshaw puller and he is working according to his ability. He is transporting the people from one location to another location. And he has, imagine he has a big family of five, six, seven, eight kids and wife, father, mother. Then he needs one lakh rupees for the survival. Then he would be given one lakh rupees. That means everybody has to work according to their ability and they would get according to their needs that is the ideal type of socialism but indian socialism is about giving welfare for the people welfare of the people poor people should get free of cost medical facility medical health care and free of cost education free of cost they should get maximum possible number of days employment then in this way it is indian socialism is about empowerment of the poor then india should be a country focusing on the welfare of the poor that is the meaning of india is a socialist country then being a socialist country we are focusing on following matters that is welfare for poor and eradication of poverty then welfare of the poor eradication of poverty and and welfare of the poor eradication of the poverty and giving free government services then that is the welfare welfare state free government services for the poor community india should focus india is such a country which is focusing well on the welfare of the poor community of the country and third one is secularism and the term secularism, Indian secularism is also different from the mainstream European secularism. European secularism is about rejecting the religion. You reject the religion and be a rational person thinking. Rational person means then finding, trying to find out the truth by yourself, not without focusing on much on any religion. That is the European secularism. Indian secularism means that one thing one part of indian secularism everybody in india will have the freedom to follow any religion they want then freedom of religion is a part of indian secularism then indian secularism is one part of indian secularism is freedom of religion freedom to follow any religion second part of the indian secularism is that there is no official religion for the state. India is not a Hindu Rashtra, neither a Muslim Rashtra or any other religious Rashtra. India is a secular country. There is no official religion for state. Then the meaning of secularism in India is that there is no official religion for state in India. And the third one is that the state would follow an equal distance towards every religion. Then the state will have an approach of equal distance towards every religion. Every religion will get the equal care and protection from the state. State will not be more closer to any particular religion or more neglecting any particular religion. No people of believing in any particular religion would not be considered as a secondary citizen, citizen or no people from any other particular religion would be considered as a primary citizen of India. Everybody will have the equal citizenship. State would not have any official religion. State would follow an equal distance then every religion would be put at a distance from the state. No religion is more closer, no religion is more away from the state approach. This is the secularism of India. Then freedom of religion, no official religion for the state, and equal distance towards every religion. That is the meaning of freedom of religion as now the secularism as mentioned in the preamble of Indian constitution. Next value mentioned in the preamble of Indian constitution is that India is a democratic country. Then see what is democracy. Democracy means that there is a famous 
definition of democracy by Abraham Lincoln that is by the people for the people and from the people some people some representatives from the people would be elected and for the people for working for serving the nation and serving the people of the country and they will be elected by the people itself that means Indian administration or government of India would be a government elected by the people then there is the first model of democracy in India is there is universal adult adult franchise universal adult franchise that means everybody who is an adult at present the meaning of adult is that above 18 year old he will have the right to vote in an election and decide the ruler of the country then the country's rulers would be selected by the people of the country through a universal adult franchise then by selecting selection of the administrative administrative body or the government of india would be done by a voting of the people then people will elect someone from among the people and they are elected for serving the nation and serving the people of the country then on a regular interval there would be election in india that election is based on universal adult franchise and regularly that is the interval in india is five years every five years the government has to get the majority of the support of the people through democratic system and only then they can form the government in the country and that is the meaning of democracy next republic the fifth value fifth nature of the stage as mentioned in the preamble of indian constitution is that india is a republic then what is the meaning of republic republic in some states or some nations the head of the state would be a nominated person in some other countries or some other states the head of the state would be an elected person for example in the u.s president of the u.s is an elected person in india also president of india is an elected person although we don't participate in voting we are not among the electoral college for the election of president of india president of india still he is elected by the elected representatives of lok sabha rajya sabha and state legislative assemblies of 29 states and two union territories delhi and puducherry then president of india is also elected but he is in the, not in, not directly elected by the people he is elected by the representatives of the people sitting in lok sabha rajya sabha and state legislative assemblies of all 29 states and two union territories they are delhi and puducherry then the elected members of rajya sabha rajya sabha has some nominated members also 12 members of Rajya Sabha are nominated, they are not voters, they are not in the election, not voting in the election of the President of India. Then elected members of Lok Rajya Sabha, elected members of Raj Lok Sabha, Lok Sabha also has two nominated members from Anglo-Indian community, they will not participate in voting, only elected MPs, members of Lok Sabha will participate. Elected members of 29 state legislative assemblies in India, in each state legislative assembly also there is one member who is nominated from the anglo indian community he will not participate in voting then the elected members of 29 state legislative assemblies and elected members of the two union territories two union territories have the legislative assemblies one is delhi and another one is puducherry then these people are the voters through a voting among them president of india is elected then a country with a president or with the head of state being elected is known as republic then india is a republic because we have a president who is elected then republic means that a state with elected head of the state then state with elected head of state then india is a state with elected head of state that is the president of india because head of the state is the president of india prime minister is only the head of the government the person who is known as first citizen of india or the head of the state in india is the president of india then state with elected head of the head of state that is known as the republic then india is a state with elected head of 
with elected head of state. That is why India is also a republic. Then hopefully you understood what is the meaning of all the five basic natures of Indian nature of Indian state. India is a sovereign. Sec sovereign means that only parliament has the power to add or cede a territory. Socialist means that the government will focus, the state will focus on the welfare of the poor. Secular means that there is no official religion for the state. State would follow an equal distance towards every religion. Democratic means that the governments of the country would be elected by the people of the country through adult, universal adult franchise. And republic means that the head of the state would be elected. Then preamble mentions that we the people of India and solemnly resolve to constitute India into sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic. Then first point about the preamble is that source of authority is the people. Second point of, about the preamble is that there are five basic natures of Indian constitution or the state of India. They are India is a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic republic of India. Now the next point regarding the preamble of Indian constitution is that starting we discussed that first the preamble starts with we the people of India solemnly resolve to constitute India solemnly having solemnly resolved to constitute India as a sovereign secular socialist democratic republic and next after that it starts that and to secure all its citizens and the next sentence is that and we are we are solemnly resolved to secure to secure and to secure all its citizens and to secure all its citizens and next there are some values are mentioned and the constitution wants to or the people of india wants to secure all the citizens of the country the following objectives of the nation then it also mentions about the objectives of india or objectives of nation then the constitution the preamble mentions that and to secure all its citizens the following objectives of nation it is the objectives of nation is not there in the text of preamble and we and to secure all its citizens then some values are mentioned they are known as the objectives of the nation then preamble also list out the list out the objectives of the nation now we can see what are the objectives of nation as listed out by the preamble of indian constitution first one is justice then first one is justice and second one to secure all its citizens justice liberty equality and fraternity and second one is justice liberty and third one is equality justice liberty equality and fourth is fraternity then constitution the preamble mentions the objectives of the nation is to secure all its citizens justice liberty equality and fraternity now we can see the explanation of these terms justice liberty equality fraternity as given in the preamble of indian constitution what justice what justice has to be secured for all citizens of india different types of justice are the imagine that if a person is an aggrieved party that means somebody attacked the person then justice is giving the punishment to the other person the pain suffered by that person we cannot take back that then giving punishment to the other person then giving not doing any injustice then for the stage of india justice means that giving everybody equal access to every system that not doing any injustice or any harm to any individual in any aspect then justice it constitution preamble tells that to secure all its citizens justice that justice is social economic and tax social economic and political social justice economic justice and political justice has to be secured for all citizens of india social justice what is social justice social justice in india there was a worst culture of untouchability then 
considering everybody as a equal citizen and equal human being in India is the best way of presenting the social social justice in India. That is, equality is the base of social justice. Economic justice, economic justice is also giving everybody equal opportunity to develop their economic enterprises and economic development. Everybody should have the equal opportunity. Somebody may utilize the opportunity, some other person may not utilize. That means an employment opportunity should be open for everybody. And business starting opportunity should be open for everybody. If some people are the who are unable to catch up with the mainstream economic growth because of some reason and because of some disability or some social reasons, government has to compensate them by well, by giving by delivering welfare measures for the people who are unable to catch up themselves to the economic growth of the nation or development of the nation that is ensuring minimum survival mechanism minimum necessities of the survival for everybody that is the economic justice next one is political justice political justice is that everybody should be a universal adult franchise that is everybody has the voting right in india in the same manner every citizen can be the candidate in the election and if he gets the majority votes he can or she can be elected then the, uh, the, the, the right to vote and the right to be elected are the political justice then constitution mentions that to secure all its citizens the justice that is social economic and political next one is liberty liberty what is liberty liberty is freedom but then what is the difference between the freedom and liberty the constitution used the term liberty the liberty means that limited freedom or control freedom we have liberty only we don't have freedom freedom means that if there is freedom of speech and expression a person has the freedom to speak and express whatever he wants but that should not be that should not be an interference in the freedom of others having freedom of speech and expression no person in India has the freedom to make a false allegation against another person or to harm the proud of another and prestige of another person then it will it is punishable then limited freedom or control freedom is known as liberty then we have the liberty of thought we have the liberty to think whatever you want then liberty of thought expression you have the freedom to express that is by writing by cartoon by movie or by speech you can express whatever you want then freedom of thought expression freedom of belief you have the freedom to believe in whatever you want next one freedom of faith that is also freedom of faith and freedom of worship then you have the freedom to believe or have a faith in anything and freedom to worship any god or not to worship even a single god all these liberties or the limited freedoms are given for thinking expressing believing and having faith and worshiping something then these freedoms or the least liberties are given by the preamble of indian constitution next one is that equality what is equality equality of status and opportunity then there is equality of status and opportunity in india everybody should be considered with the e people with equal status that means no person is considered as upper class or an upper caste another person could not be considered as a lower caste there is no theory of caste system in new india which is which is built by the new constitution of India. Then caste system is abolished, that is status. There is no stratification of the status, that is lower status, upper status, that is completely abolished. If a person is a citizen of India, he is at high status. And everybody is at the high status. There is no untouchability, no low status, no high status system in new India. Then opportunity. If there is a education, for example, education opportunity, one of the most important aspect of the caste system was denial of education for the lower caste community. Because the Vedic education or the Sanskrit education was the monopoly of the Brahmins. Only they were permitted to learn the Sanskrit and go to the Gurugulas, that were the traditional schools. Then 
that opportunity will be made now open for everybody and government employment that will be open for everybody then equality of status and whatever opportunities are available in the state that is open for everybody in the country with equal access then equality of status and opportunity is also guaranteed by the preamble of Indian Constitution next preamble talks that and this is also guaranteed equality of status and opportunity and to promote among them all among all the Indian citizens we have to promote fraternity what is the fraternity fraternity means the brotherhood and a feeling of brotherhood every Indian is my brother and sister that is also an indicate and in, in, in what is an, that is also an unavoidable necessity of India then Promoting among all fraternity it is also the objective of the nation. We have to promote among all the fraternity, assuring the dignity of individual. Then fraternity has to be assuring dignity of individual. That means if we are feeling each other as brothers and sisters, everybody is getting dignity. If we are looking to other person as a substandard or a secondary citizen of the country, we are not ensuring the dignity of individual. Then assuring dignity of individual, that is one thing. Assuring dignity of individual and the unity and integrity of nation. And unity and integrity. Unity is the feeling of unity and integrity unity and integrity of nation integrity is the more strong bond of the unity and assuring the unity and integrity of the nation and for ensuring the dignity of individual fraternity should be promoted among all indian citizens then the nature or the objectives of the nation as mentioned in the preamble are for justice liberty equality and fraternity Justice is just social, economic and political justice, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship and equality of status and opportunity and promoting among all the fraternity, assuring dignity of individual and unity and integrity of the nation. This is the, this is the four objectives mentioned, objectives of nation as mentioned in the preamble of Indian constitution. Next part of the preamble of Indian constitution is that in the end of the preamble it mentions the date of adoption of Indian constitution that is on which date the constitution of India was adopted, enacted and given to ourselves as the new constitution of India that is also mentioned in the preamble of Indian constitution. Then we are going to discuss the last part of the preamble that is date of adoption. What is the date of adoption of the Indian constitution? You can see in the end of the preamble and you can see this text in our constituent assembly. That is constituent assembly was the body for preparing the constitution. And in our constituent assembly on this 26th day of November, then it was done on this 26th day of November, on this 26th day of November, we adopt that means the constituent assembly do adopt november 1949 then the day of adoption of indian constitution by the constituent assembly is 26 november 1949 then 26 november on this day of 26 november 1949 do hereby adopt enact and give to ourselves this constitution three terms are used then this constitution is adopted and we adopt enact and the constitution is enacted and the constitution is given to ourselves we give to ourselves then if the question comes on which day constitution was enacted the answer is 26 november 1949 and if on which day constitution was given to ourselves the answer is again 26 november 1949 constitution was adopted then in the last of in the end of the preamble it mentions that in our constituent assembly 
on this 26th day of November 1949, we adopt, enact, and give to ourselves the Constitution of India. Then Constitution is given to the nation by Constituent Assembly on 26 November 1949. That is known as the Day of Adoption, Adoption and Enactment or the day in which Constitution was given to ourselves. This is the text of preamble. By this, the text of preamble ends. Then the different components, different parts of text of preamble also we have discussed. First one, source of authority is the people of India. Second one, the nature of Indian state is sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic India. And next one is that the objectives of the nation, justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. Day of adoption is 26 November 1949. Now we are going to discuss about the amendment of Indian preamble of the Indian constitution. Amendment of preamble that means amending whether preamble can be changed and something more to be added to the preamble it can be done. Then we have a chapter on the amendment procedure of Indian constitution there we will discuss about how the amendment can be done. The amendment of the constitution needs the 2 by 3 majority that is not less than half that is the special majority of the parliament. We will discuss in detail in the chapter on the amendment that is can we change the preamble that is the question whether the preamble can be amended or whether any time in the past preamble has been amended or it has been changed yes it has been amended in the year 1976 there was a 42nd amendment act of indian constitution in the year 1976 then in 1976 through 42nd amendment act of indian constitution three words or three terms were added to the preamble they are socialist then and to secure and and the, they are the socialist and in the nature we solemnly having solemnly resolved to constitute india as a sovereign second one is socialist that was later added in 1976 up to 1976 the there was no term socialist in the preamble it was added in 1976 second term also secular was also added to preamble in 1976 then before 1976 indian constitution preamble was like this we the people of india having solemnly constituted to resolve to, having solemnly resolved to constitute india into sovereign democratic republic socialist secular were, were not the they were added by 42nd amendment act 1976 then next word added to the preamble was indignity indignity there is a term and to promote among all you can see in the end and to promote among all fraternity assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation that indignity then the term earlier it was only unity of the nation the unity and integrity the integrity term was added by 42nd amendment act of indian constitution in 1976 these are the three terms which were not available in the original constitution which was later added by 42nd amendment act 1946 to the preamble of indian constitution now we are going to discuss some miscellaneous points about the preamble first one preamble is known as the horoscope of sovereign democratic republic of india and it is the horoscope of horoscope of sovereign democratic republic of india then india is a sovereign democratic republic then the horoscope means that something which predicts the future by looking into the intelligence talent talent of a person you can sometimes predict that there is a chance this person would qualify the civil services examination the very next attempt then that is a horoscope by looking into the natural hard work we are making a prediction then by looking into the preamble of Indian constitution, we can predict that our sovereign democratic republic will exist forever in future also. Then this is the future prediction of sovereign democratic republic of India can be done by analyzing the analyzing the 
preamble of Indian constitution. That is why preamble is known as horoscope of sovereign democratic republic. Second point is that preamble is also known as the key to the constitution. Now we are going to enter the constitution. Then while entering into a house, there is need of a key. While entering to a book, you have to go through the introduction like that. To enter into the main body of the preamble, you have to cross through the pre main body of the constitution. You have to cross through the preamble. Then preamble is known as key of Indian constitution. Then preamble is known as the key of the constitution. Next one is that preamble is known as the jewel set of Indian constitution. Then jewel set of constitution because preamble gives all attractive values of Indian constitution that is sovereign democratic republic, sovereign socialist, secular democratic republic. These are the wonderful ideas of the modern era and we are ensuring everybody justice, equality, liberty and fraternity another set of wonderful ideas. Then this, these are attractive ideas, jewel set of uh, ornaments, it is kept, it is made for making more attraction to the ornaments. Then these are the attractive concepts of Indian constitution, that is why it is known as jewel set of Indian constitution. Then preamble is known as jewel set of Indian constitution. Next one, whether preamble is a part of constitution or it is outside the constitution, that is another discussion. Then preamble is whether it is a part because in, it is introduction of a book is a part of book or is something outside the text of the book that is a discussion because if preamble is a part of the constitution then amending preamble needs the amendment procedure of the Indian constitution many values are there otherwise the values mentioned in the preamble has to be protected by the state if it is a part of constitution there was a discussion whether preamble is a part of Indian constitution and there was a famous well discussed case in the Supreme Court named as Keshavananda Bharati case. Then in Keshavananda Bharati case, we will discuss in detail about the Keshavananda Bharati case in the coming chapters. In Keshavananda Bharati case, the Supreme Court has given the judgment that preamble is a part of Indian constitution. That is why at present preamble is considered as a part of Indian constitution then preamble as per the judgment of the Supreme Court in Keshavananda Bharati case preamble is a part of Indian constitution. Next point as we discussed earlier whether preamble can be amended or changed it is sure that something can be added to the preamble whether something existing in the preamble can be deleted or not then the answer is that some parts can be deleted, some other parts cannot be deleted. There is a concept. This concept was also introduced by the Supreme Court in Keshavananda Bharati case that is basic structure or basic feature of Indian constitution. Some values in the Indian constitution are known as basic structure or basic feature of Indian constitution. That is democracy is a basic structure secularism is a basic structure socialism is a basic structure and republic sovereignty everything is basic structure then there are some values mentioned in the preamble they are known as the basic structure basic structure is decided by the supreme court of india what are the basic structure of indian constitution that will be decided by the supreme court this idea or concept was also introduced by Supreme Court in the Keshavan and the Bharati case that everything in the constitution can be amended or deleted except the basic structure because every building will have a base. If you remove the base of the building, the building will collapse. Then the nation India is set on some basic principles and ideas. They are democracy, secularism, socialism, sovereignty, republic, welfare state, etc. etc. around 1819 up to around 20 basic structures are there for the Indian constitution they can never be erased or they can never be deleted from the Indian constitution then the India the idea of India collapses then in the Keshavar and the Bharati case the Supreme Court has made a judgment everything in the preamble or in the constitution can be amended 
accept those ideas, those concepts which are categorized by the Supreme Court as the basic structure of the Indian Constitution. We have a detailed discussion on the basic st structure in the chapter on the amendment which is coming ahead. Then in future chapters we will discuss in detail about Keshavananda Bharati case and the basic structure of Indian Constitution. By this I am winding up for today. In the next session, in the next episode, we can meet again with another chapter of Indian Polity. Thank you for watching.